In this video, I'm gonna show you five ways you can automate your lights in Home Assistant. In the first part of the video, I'm gonna talk about the use cases. In the second part of the video, we're gonna look either at the UI or the code that actually create these automations. All these automations will work regardless of how you've integrated either lights or switches. If you want a shortcut and go straight and find the code, you can find the code on my blog. That's leonardosmarthomemakers.com slash blog. This is Gia from Smart Home Makers and let's roll the intro. So today we're gonna to start nice and simple, simple automation. We're gonna turn on lights at sunset. What this does, we have a trigger and the trigger is the sun and the position of the sun and that's defined by the sunset state. It can be sunrise or sunset. And then we have an action. This can turn a bulb on or switch on or multiple bulbs or even a scene. This is quite simple to achieve and I'll show you later how to do it. So I'm gonna put this as a one star automation beginner, get ourselves a bit warmed up. Let's move on to the next one. This automation will enable us to turn on lights at a specific time instead of waiting maybe for the sun to set or the sunrise. How we do this is that we create an input boolean or a helper in the UI or code and we add that to our dashboard. That will give us a nice time that we can actually change and that time then will be tied into the real time and whenever that actually occurs, it will trigger a light bulb. So for example, you could use this to do any sort of thing like reminding yourself to do something at a certain time or if there's always something that you don't wanna miss at a certain time and you want your lights to go on or perhaps you want your lights to go off at a certain time to signal it's time to go to bed. This automation, I'm gonna give it a one and a half stars out of three. So it's a little bit more complex than previous one because you need the input boolean, but it's also quite straightforward to do. This automation is again back to basics, turning on lights when people come home. So when you set up your home assistant initially, you should set up a home zone. And basically you can use geofencing with your mobile phone and home assistant installed on it or a third party app. And then that will signal your, your zones. So once you're inside the, the radius, of home, then you can trigger all sorts of scenes that you can turn on and you can turn off lights actually when you actually leave the home also. Be aware with this one because if you have multiple people in the home or if you have guests in the home, you're gonna to need to sort of cater for that scenario too. So let me know in the comment section down below if you're gonna need any help with that and I can come in and give you some suggestions and ideas. This one is the most common one. It's motion activated lights. So you're gonna need a motion sensor and you're gonna need some lights. And this automation has actually used the three parts, triggers, actions, and conditions. And this actually is really simple to do but it's also very effective. So let's talk about it. So the actual trigger point is the motion. So a motion sensor has picked up motion in a certain area. Then it's gonna run through a condition and the condition that I said is the sort of amount of a light that's in the room. So not necessarily dark in sense of, you know, at night, but it could be just a, you know, rain, very rainy day. We have a few of those in the UK. And you know, that could trigger a light or depending on you know, if it's in a dark room, or dark space, that could trigger the light. So you can set that level as, as you wish and you'll set that in the conditions and then you'll just use your normal action which will be to turn on the light. You can also do the reverse after certain amount of minutes where there are no motion, you can turn off your light. This automation, we're gonna give it a one and a half stars. So it's not that difficult but it's just got, you gotta have put your head around the three very basic components. Now this last use case is a specific use case that I actually have, and this is the most difficult automation we're gonna look at today, but it's even not that complex because it leverages templates. So what this automation is, briefly, is syncing up two different lights. So I have a light from one brand, Philips Hue, and another light from another brand, um, Lidl. And what happens is, if someone controls the light for outside of Home Assistant using the Hue app or the Hue switch, then all of our, all Hue lights go in sync, but the little lights don't, and they're in the same room, and it, it just makes it difficult. So I can set an automation up in Home Assistant to mirror the state. So when one light is on, the other light always turns on, and when the light is off, the light is off. You can do this even with colors and brightness. So I'm gonna give you a couple of few examples. This is gonna be a code-driven tutorial when we get into the tutorial part of the video. And you're actually, I'm gonna put actually two or three examples of how you can achieve this yourself. If you're wondering how to integrate lights into Home Assistant, I made another video 
where I show four ways that you can actually control lights with home assistant. It gives you a bit of an idea of Zigbee and Wi-Fi and all these other things that you need to think about when you're actually purchasing these lights or switches. I'm gonna link it somewhere here and you can go check that out after you finish this video. And as always, if you're getting value out of this video and you wanna see more content from smart home makers, then consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video to spread the word and help with the Google algorithm. So let's look into the UI first, and then afterwards we'll look into the code. But all of this will be written up in my blog and you'll have the code for all of the automations there if you just wanna copy and paste them. So from your home screen, go into configurations and automations. Now we're in the automations page, and from the UI we can simply, with a few click of a button, add automations. Now this is a new automation, you can go click add automation, or you can find your existing automation and edit it using the pencil over here. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to find my turn on lights at sunset and I'm going to edit it. So click on this pencil here and then we have this screen. So a few things, very simply, what do we need to do? Let's go and change the name. Let's give it a name. So I'm just calling it turn on, turn on lights at sunset. You can be more specific if you're turning on only a few lights. Then look at the trigger type. So the trigger, you remember from my diagram, the trigger is the sun and the state of the sun is sunset. So we need to go and look at the trigger type. The trigger type has several options. Just pick sun and then pick sunset between the two. You're also able to offset it. This is in case when you want it, um, you know, you want to wait until the lights to come on in our example and you can do like a plus one or even a minus one if you want it to turn on a little bit uh, earlier, sooner. Conditions we don't need, this is optional because we are not applying any condition. In terms of actions, we are going to turn on our lights. So to turn on lights, what you do is you click on action type and pick call service. The service we're going to use is light.turn underscore on. And now we need to pick the actual entity of the light that we want to turn on. In my example, I'm picking a, a play bar. You can actually pick multiple. So if you click down here, you can see add action and you can add uh, another light or a switch or anything else really. Once that's done, you would save the automation and you have an option here to enable disable automation and to execute the automation. Now remember when you execute the automation, you're not actually testing the uh, trigger, you're just testing the action. To actually test the trigger, you're gonna need to either wait until the event actually happens, so in this case, the sun sets, or you can go into the developer tools and manipulate the state of the sun and put it uh, as if it was sunset already. To do that, go to developer tools, and in the entity list, you can search for sun, and you can find sun.sun, and you can find the status of the sun. And here you find all of the information of uh, and currently it's uh, below horizon. Now in our second automation, we're gonna turn on lights with a specific time instead of using the sun. To do this, we've got this alarm condition here. And as you can see, I can change this and put any time I want in here, in this alarm. And this will actually trigger and it will trigger once a day and it will trigger only at a specific time that I created. And I, I can manipulate that and change that to any time I wish. So you just go in here, you can change this number to something else and it immediately updates. Now I'll show you how you can create this little alarm helper. Go into configurations, go to helpers, and just add a helper, click the plus button, add helper, go date or time, and then here we can specify date and time, and we can just give it an icon and a name and just click create, that's done. So once you've created a helper, you just go back to the automations and you can add a new automation again. Now again, we're given a name and this time we're gonna use the time in terms of the trigger type and we've got value of date time helper, very convenient. And just pick the name of the helper we created in this case and in input date time and I've just called it alarm. Once you have that time set up, that's your trigger point and then go back into the actions, gonna be same pretty much for all the automations here, call service, light dot, turn underscore on, and just put the entity ID. Save that, test that, execute that, and you're all good. In this automation, we're gonna use the actual zones, and this is gonna be straightforward because the home zone, you always set it up 
initially when we configure Home Assistant. So let's go and select the trigger type as zone and let's pick a person. So I'm picking myself as the person. You can also pick a specific device tracker, but you can associate device trackers to people. So I have that's what I've done. And so if I change the device tracker, I don't need to change the automation code again or the UI or whatever. Just pick zone, the name of the zone, home is home. And then you can pick enter. So this is gonna trigger when I enter the home zone. Not if I'm already in the home zone, only if I leave the home zone and I'm coming back into the home zone. Obviously to do this, you're gonna to need to have your uh, tracking device needs to have some signal. So it needs to be on 4G, 5G or whatever. And that's gonna to need to communicate back to home assistant basically saying, yeah, he's, uh, you know, this person's out of the zone and then coming back, there might be a, a, a lag and that's depending on your device tracker that you use. I'm using Life 360, but I don't get much time out of the house nowadays to do things that are happening in the world. So I can't really test it that well, but when things get moving, I'll test it and I'll probably put a, a, a review out on the channel. Again, the actions, as you've seen from the other videos, could be pretty much the same, so I'm not gonna talk much more about it. This next automation is triggering a light with motion sensor with a specific condition. So I'm gonna show you this in Visual Studio Code now. So first thing you do here is the alias. The alias is your name, and the name can be very descriptive. If it is descriptive, you don't need a description, but you can also add a description and it's optional. The trigger is a trigger point and the trigger is going to be my motion sensor. So the motion sensor that I have is the kitchen motion sensor and I'm waiting for that to trigger to on. So that's my trigger. My condition, as you can see right underneath here, is actually looking for a numeric state. So I'm looking at a value at a number, that's what it means. And I'm looking at a sensor and the sensor is the kitchen motion light level. So it's telling me what is the level of light in my uh, room. And with that level of light, I'm looking at a specific threshold. That is the threshold that um, I've set, and I've set it as 80. And you're gonna need to find out your own threshold with your own light conditions in the home. So set that, you can always change it. And I'm setting it below 80. So when it drops under 80, this automation will trigger. In the action part, you can have multiple service calls. And these are basically uh, for each light. So I have the light dot turn on and I'm turning on a light strip. I'm putting actual color. I'm giving it orange, 255 brightness. I'm turning on some other switches down there and I'm actually turning on the Christmas tree still. Probably need to remove that because that we don't need that anymore. The last automation of today is the syncing of lights between one light and another and making them work in tandem. Now you can create groups, just to make you aware of this, you can create groups and then you can put when you want all the lights to always move and always turn on, always turn off. What the solution I'm gonna show you now is actually a solution for if you want retro compatibility with other apps. So if you have your lights controlled by other people in your home that are using different apps, or if you yourself wanna use different apps still, and you wanna ensure that things still work, cross brands, for example, this is how you can do it. So here, for example, this is a very simple example to start with. I'm syncing the state of the lights. So I have this light is a LifeX light, and I have this bar that's in front of me. It's a Philips Hue Play. And what I'm doing is I'm saying any time this light, this switch turns on, so it turns on the LifeX bulb, then I want this uh, Hue to turn on. Now in my second example, which I'm gonna show you now, so I'm looking for the Huawei white candle. That's the name of the um, bulb I have. And if that turns on, then that automatically is gonna turn on the little light. So they're in sync and they're on the same lamp. They're three light bulbs, right? And then I'm passing the bright brightness. So the interesting part here is the brightness. So this brightness is using templating. templating. And basically what I'm saying here is I'm looking for the trigger to state. So that means it is the, the state of what was triggered. So of the white candle, Huey white candle two. And I'm looking for the two states. So what was it, not from before, but what was it after it triggered? So what is the current, um, you know, state of it? So it's on basically. And I'm looking at the brightness level. And then that brightness level is in the attributes 
And then that's just going to be the same value I'm syncing it with the little lamp one. Now a bit more complicated building on top of this knowledge that we're uh, you know going through now. Uh, we're actually syncing the bulbs. I'm syncing now the living room light, which is a colored light, same room, and then we're syncing it to the little lamp, which is an E14 bulb, which is colored capable. And what we're doing is we're syncing them two together and we're using brightness again, but we're also using the RGB color to sync them up and you can use the Kelvin, you can use any values that actually are in the developer tools and the attributes and then you can sync them and match them up. So I'm gonna give you a demo of, the, of it, how it works. So I have my lamp two and my little lamp one. As you can see now, they're at the same state. So I'm gonna move the brightness and so now they are, they're not in sync as you can see. But my automation here is gonna actually look for this um, trigger point. So I'm changing it to 49% and above trigger. Let me click on this, turn it to 86 and they move, remove it into 95. So as you can see, they're both moving along. Now if I turn it off, the little lamp doesn't do anything because that is not how the automation has been written for that. I will need to take care of that if I actually want it to turn off. Now let's try out the living room too. So if I change the living room to brightness, you can see immediately lamp one and lamp two both updated because they're both in sync with the living room too. So I'm gonna click here in the three dots and I'm gonna change the color. So I'm gonna put it on uh, green and you can see they're green and I can change it to, I'm gonna go again here and I'm gonna go change it to, to red and you can see the statuses have been updated. If you enjoyed this video, I've got two options for you. Five automations with zones and seven automations with NFC tags. If you enjoyed this video, please like, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.